Now you often hear the argument that we are wasting our time with electric vehicles because hydrogen powered vehicles are the future. Well, hydrogen powered vehicles are not only the future, they're here today. So why haven't they caught on? Well, we're looking into that and more in today's episode. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit like if you're enjoying the content and for extra bonus, make sure you hit that notification bell. I'm Luke and welcome to The Future is Electric. Now the promise with hydrogen powered vehicles is that you do not need a large high voltage battery. A battery which in its production will produce CO2 emissions. Now the only emissions from a hydrogen powered vehicle while it's running are water vapor and heat. Sounds great, right? Now the great thing about hydrogen is that it is a widely available resource in the universe and on planet Earth. The problem is it's never available as just hydrogen. It is always connected to something else. And thus we need to employ a process in order to separate it to create pure hydrogen. So primarily there are two ways to make hydrogen. One is through a process called electrolysis. In this process, we use something called an electrolyzer. Now here, we take normal water, we apply and use electricity, and the process will separate the hydrogen atoms, which is what we want, from the oxygen atoms. And thus, we have pure hydrogen. Now, of course, if you're using a clean renewable energy source, such as wind or solar, to power that electrolyzer, then you have what we call green hydrogen or hydrogen which was created from a renewable resource. Now the other way to make hydrogen is from natural gas. Yes, natural gas, not very renewable and not very carbon neutral. So in this process you take natural gas and you reform it with hot steam. Now this process separates those hydrogen atoms from that carbon atom. Guess what? That carbon ends up in the atmosphere as a result causing global warming. Now, this is by far and large the way we make hydrogen today. In fact, it is responsible for 95% of the hydrogen production. Now, that hydrogen production is responsible for 2% of all global emissions. Just to put you in the picture, that's the same amount of emissions as the entire aviation industry or the same amount of emissions produced by all of Indonesia and the United Kingdom combined. Now, of course, you can attempt to capture the carbon dioxide before it's released into the atmosphere through a process called carbon capture. However, carbon capture has been spoken about many times over. And till today, despite being worked on for years, we do not have a feasible solution and it doesn't look like we're going to have a feasible solution, especially one that can scale to the level we need. Let's assume we figure out carbon capture. Why would the companies who are producing the hydrogen go through the extra expense of putting together the machinery required for carbon capture? And even if that expense is subsidized by governments, who is going to monitor that it is functioning correctly? Do we really want to take that chance? Now let's assume we're going to power our hydrogen fuel cell vehicle using green hydrogen or hydrogen which is produced from a renewable resource. How much energy is going into that electrolysis process? And how does that compare to energy which could otherwise be fed directly into a battery electric vehicle? So during the electrolysis process, imagine we take a 100% energy and we feed it in. 75% of that energy comes out of the other side. But critically, that energy has changed form. It has changed form to heat. It is no longer in a manner or in a form which can be used for work or to, say, move a vehicle. So we're going to take that heat in the fuel cell vehicle and convert it back to an energy or electricity which we can use to power the electric motor found in a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. Now, at best, that process is 50% efficient. So, 
In total, the end-to-end -end efficiencies of this process are just 30%, which is only marginally better than what we get today in petrol-powered vehicles. This means that to go the exact same distance in a hydrogen-powered vehicle, you need 70% more electricity than if you were to take that electricity and power your electric car directly. This is what makes hydrogen very expensive, because somebody has to foot the bill for those 70% of losses. Now, on this channel, we've seen in a previous video, which I'm linking above, how my electric car in the real world and my solar panels in the real world, you would need just four solar panels to run my vehicle, my battery electric vehicle, for a full year worth of travel. Now, if I was using those solar panels to make hydrogen and use those, that hydrogen to power my hypothetical hydrogen-powered vehicle, I would need 16 solar panels to go the exact same distance as I do today in my battery electric vehicle. So who wants hydrogen fuel cell vehicles? And why are certain car brands developing this technology? Well, the fossil fuel industry wants hydrogen powered vehicles because it will increase their natural gas sales by four times over. So does this mean that hydrogen has no application for the transport industry? Not necessarily. However, for the passenger car, unless a new revolutionary way to produce green hydrogen comes about, and we've been trying to solve that problem for 30 years, then as we saw in this video, we're better off sticking to battery electric vehicles. So let me know what you think of all this and what you think of the new setup in the comments below. As always, I'm Luke. Make sure you hit subscribe and like if you enjoyed today's video. And if you want to go the extra mile, check out our Patreon link below. But for now, I hope I've convinced you that the future is electric. <laughs>